Hi, I'm Mike Shepard with Chopra Education. Welcome back to Introduction to Ayurveda. In today's class, we're going to be talking about the layers of life, commonly known as mind, body, and spirit. So starting out with the body, your body is made up of the environment that you find yourself in, whether that's in a particular home setting or a particular city or country, your biology, your physiology is totally connected into the environment that you're in. And this has a dramatic impact on your physiology, your, your mood, your hormones. Take for example, if you're on a business trip and you sleep overnight in a hotel room that you've never been in before, you may find it hard to get comfortable to fall asleep at night. The difference between your personal bedroom is that's made up of all of your microbiome and in a hotel room there's nothing that's uniquely you that's there and so it feels a little bit different a little uncomfortable similarly your physiology takes on unique differences if you live in a cold climate versus a very hot climate so the environment that we find ourselves in definitely impact our physiology there's another kind of uniqueness to that you probably had a situation maybe where you even walked into a room where some people were arguing. And even though they may not be saying anything, you can feel the tension in the room. The, the feeling is unique and different, and your physiology picks up on that. Next is your personal body. And in Sanskrit, we call this Anamaya Kosha. Anamaya Kosha, the layer made of food. The old adage, you are what you eat, is unique and true. And one of the foundational elements of Ayurveda teaches um, the importance of good nutrition, getting a good diet to fuel your physical body. The third level is pranamaya kosha. Pranamaya kosha, or the layer of biological energy. Prana is the vital life force that we breathe in we breathe life in and we breathe life out so pranamaya kosha is that layer of biological energy that we all have just sitting your body generates about 100 watts of energy enough to power a light bulb if we were to connect wires to your hand um, but in an instance if someone were to run into the room and yell fire you could generate 2,000 watts of energy, enough to run out the door or jump through a window. And even in some cases, we've seen people demonstrate superhuman strength. For example, if a, if a mom saw their child pinned underneath um, a car tire, somewhere they would find strength to lift that car off. The will at that moment just says, I have to get this car lifted no matter what strength is needed. That kind of biological energy is within each of us. The next level of mind, body, spirit is the mind. And we call this the subtle body or sukshma sharia. Sukshma sharia in Sanskrit. And this is your mind, your intellect, and your ego. Starting with the mind, this is your emotions, feelings, moods, and desires. Everything that you see you run through the filter of your mind to know whether you like it or get some kind of a response from it if you see a certain person your mind goes into its memory banks and says oh that's joe blow or that's susie Cuby." also it could associate some meaning to it whether you like this person or whether you had a um, some kind of a meeting with them that was good or bad your mind is your foe and it's your best friend at the same time. And becoming aware of your mind is one of the pillars of Ayurveda that we're going to be exploring very, very deeply. Next is your intellect. And this is your, um, your interpretation, your understandings, and also your discriminations on things. Your intellect is what makes one person say, I'm uh, I like this political party, or I don't like that political party. 
or I like this religion, or I don't like that religion. Intellect is another one of those things of the mind that can be um, very beneficial to the learning process, but it can also be, it can also build a, a big wall to the furtherance of your understanding. And sometimes um, you may think, oh, I know this subject so well, there's nothing left for me to understand. And your intellect can actually be a stumbling block to you know, the furtherance of your education. Next is your ego. And this is the I. This is when somebody says, what do you do or who are you? This is the, the ego's response that says, well, I'm a firefighter or I'm a doctor or I'm a husband or I'm a father. So the ego is the thing that gets bruised when somebody says, so I, I don't like how you did this or that. It's the ego that um, feels that it's being slighted. And at the deepest level of the mind, body, spirit, we have the causal body. And this is Karana Sharia, Karana Sharia in Sanskrit. At the spiritual level, you have your personal soul, your collective soul, and your universal soul. The moment you were born, even before, at the moment of conception, your personal soul, your jiva, was established. And this is the basis of everything that you are as an individual. Your personal soul is the true self, and this is beyond the mind, the intellect, and the ego. Your personal soul is the one that, when you say to yourself, I changed my mind, your personal soul is the I that is doing the changing of the mind. So we will talk a lot about your personal soul and the power of getting in touch with your true self at this deep, deep level. Next, we have the collective soul, known in Sanskrit as Atman. So your collective soul is all the archetypal types that have gone on centuries before you that influence your personal soul. Similarly, your collective soul can be influenced by your family, um, the church you go to, um, the city that you live in, all of these collective soul energies feed into your personal soul and have an impact on it. And at the third level, we have our collective soul, which is Brahman. And this is the field of pure potentiality where everything springs from. And getting in touch with the universal soul is one of the most joyous things that I've done since being a part of the Chopra Center in Ayurveda, getting in touch with this deepest level of myself when I go into meditation. Um, it's an experience that's liberating, calming, and just feels like it's just full of love. And so the collective soul, getting in touch with that at this, the point of my personal soul um, is a very, very profound experience. And I'm sure that as we continue to go through these courses, you're going to find that the more that you learn about Ayurveda, as I have, you'll find that old energies like anger, sadness, frustrations, you will find yourself able to replace those energies with a new energy in Ayurveda and the energies of Ayurveda that we're learning are great energies to cultivate. So as we continue the layers of life, we'll find out that there are unique ways that our individual dosha uh, impacts our uh, layers of life on every level, the mind, body, and spirit, how we are all influenced according to our dosha type. And we're gonna understand how we influence our dosha type and what we can do when it gets out of balance in our next session. Thank you so much and talk to you soon.